My name is Technical Sergeant Rich Ehrlich, and I will be your narrator for today's ceremony. As a reminder, today's ceremony is considered an outdoor event and covers are required for military personnel. Today is a special day for the United States Transportation Command as the command is passed from General Jacqueline Van Ovost to General Randall Reed. Please welcome the personnel and commands participating in today's ceremony. Centered in front of the formations to the rear, the Commander of Troops, United States Transportation Command, Chief of Staff, Major General Susan Henderson. The groups in formation represent United States Transportation Command and its components from left to right. United States Transportation Command, represented by Colonel Susie Roberts. Air Mobility Command, represented by Colonel Ben Carroll. Military Surface Deployment and Distribution Command, represented by Colonel Paul Licata. Military Sealift Command, represented by Captain Daniel Ron. And the Joint Enabling Capabilities Command, represented by Colonel John Garvin. Today's music is provided by the Air Force Band of Mid-America. The presiding official for the change of command is the Honorable Lloyd J. Austin III, the 28th Secretary of Defense. Accompanying him is General Charles Q. Brown Jr., the 21st Chairman, Joint Chiefs of Staff. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we would like to take this opportunity to welcome our many distinguished guests who have joined us here today. Please hold your applause until all have been introduced. The wife of the Chairman, Joint Chiefs of Staff, Mrs. Shireen Brown the husband of our outgoing commander, Mr. Alan Frosch, General Van Ova's father, Hans, her sisters, Yvonne and Ingrid, her cousin, Alexander, and her friend, Mim, the wife of our incoming commander, Mrs. Lynn Reed, his parents, Moses and Marsha, and his sister, Shauna. We would also like to welcome the Honorable Jerry Costello, retired United States Representative for Illinois' 12th Congressional District, the former Vice Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff and 11th Commander of the United States Transportation Command, General Retired Paul Selva. The 20th Administrator for the Department of Transportation Maritime Administration, the Honorable Ann Phillips. The 6th Commander of United States Transportation Command, General Retired Tony Robertson. The 13th Commander of United States Transportation Command, General Retired Steve Lyons. The former commander, Air Mobility Command, General Retired Carlton Eberhardt II. The deputy commander, United States Transportation Command, Lieutenant General Jared Helwig and his wife, Diana. Former deputy commander of United States Transportation Command, Vice Admiral Retired Andy Brown and his guest, Dr. Karina Basler. The former Joint Staff Director for Logistics, Lieutenant General Retired Giovanni Tuck and his wife, Lauren. The former Deputy for Military Operations, United States Africa Command, Lieutenant General Retired James Vetri and his wife Robin. The Honorable Patricia Gregory, Mayor, City of Belleville. The Honorable Pat McMahon, Mayor, City of Muscuda. The Honorable Herb Roach, Mayor, City of O'Fallon. The Honorable Robert Wallmunster, Mayor, City of Shiloh. The Honorable Mark Kern, Chairman, St. Clair County Board. The husband of the Chief of Staff, United States Transportation Command, Mr. Bill Henderson. The wife of the Senior Enlisted Leader, United States Transportation Command, Mrs. Karine Krizelnik. The incoming Deputy Commander, Air Mobility Command, Major General Rebecca Sunkis. The wife of the Command Chief, Air Mobility Command, Mrs. Rhonda Newman. The Commanding General, Military Surface Deployment and Distribution Command, Major General Lance Curtis and his wife, Colonel Elizabeth Curtis. The Command Sergeant Major, Military Surface Deployment and Distribution Command, Command Sergeant Major Randy Brown. The Commander, Military Sealift Command, Rear Admiral Philip Sobeck. The Commander, Joint Enabling Capabilities Command, Brigadier General Michael McWilliams. The former Chief of Staff, United States Transportation Command, Major General Retired Vincent Barker and his wife, Stephanie. The former United States Transportation Command Senior Enlisted Leaders, Chief Master Sergeant Retired Ken McQuiston and Chief Master Sergeant Retired Jay France. The Commander, 375th Air Mobility Wing, Colonel John Poole and his wife, Shelley. The Command Chief, 375th Air Mobility Wing, Chief Master Sergeant Sean Andrews. And 
we would like to welcome all other flag officers, general officers, senior executive service personnel, component commanders, civic leaders, directors, commanders, senior enlisted leaders, industry partners, retirees, family, friends, and other special guests in attendance. In today's ceremony, we will be following the Navy's tradition of piping the side. It originated in the days of sailing ships from the way visiting captains arrived on board. Instead of climbing the ladders, they were hoisted aboard by a group of sailors called the side party. A title shortened in time to the side and then side boys. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the arrival of our official party. General, United States Air Force, arriving. Transportation Command, arriving. Joint Chiefs, arriving. Defense, arriving. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the commander of troops will now present the command to the presiding official. Please remain standing for the playing of Ruffles and Flourishes and Stars and Stripes forever. Zap boys, a word, face. Forward, march. Lead, 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 back, back, lead, lead, lead. The commander of troops will now advance the colors. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the advancement of the colors, the national anthem, and the invocation.
Don't walk by faith. Are you dead? The invocation is offered by Army Chaplain Lieutenant Colonel Eric Light. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, throughout the history of the world, you have heard the prayers of many warriors. Time has changed the weapons and the uniforms, but on the inside, where men and women fight a battle to live out their potential, our prayers match those warriors of old. Father, I thank you for the way that General Van Ovost has responded to the vision she had for her life. I thank you that she never gave up, regardless of how hard the task or how difficult the environment, she persisted and developed herself to become the officer standing before us today. I thank you for the stories which will be written about her and the inspiration she will be to those looking for adventure and the challenge of service in their lives. But I also thank you that we don't just get to read about it. We were blessed to have lived alongside her and experience it firsthand. My prayer is that you would bless her in equal measure to the blessing that she has been to each of us because she has delivered. And Father, as we look to the future and the leadership that General Reed will provide, I thank you for each difficult moment that has honed him into the leader that he is. I ask that you would extend to him a special grace as he takes on his new duties, endowing him with wisdom, determination, and the confidence needed to lead well. I thank you for his family and ask that you would allow them to continue to grow in love and appreciation for one another as they take on this new challenge. Thank you, Lord, for a common mission which fulfills our need to serve our country and for capable leaders who ensure that together we deliver. In your holy name, I pray these things. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. The United States Transportation Command, located at Scott Air Force Base, Illinois, was activated on 1 July 1987 and is one of 11 combatant commands. Initially, the command's mission was to provide global air, sea, and land transportation to meet national security needs in wartime only. Following U.S. Transcom's successes in Operations Desert Shield and Desert Storm, the command's mission expanded to be the single manager of transportation for the Department of Defense in both peace and war. Over the next several years, U.S. Transcom's mission expanded to include common user air refueling, global patient movement, acquisition authority to transform the DOD supply chain, mobility joint force provider, manager of the Defense Personal Property Program, 
and most recently as the single manager for global bulk fuel management. Since its inception, U.S. Transcom has been instrumental in supporting major U.S. military campaigns and humanitarian operations. During the Gulf War, U.S. Transcom executed the largest strategic movement operation since World War II. After terrorist attacks on 11 September 2001, U.S. Transcom enabled the United States global war on terror, supporting the warfighter in operations enduring freedom and Iraqi freedom. In 2021, the command was instrumental in the U.S. combat evacuation operation in history. Excuse me, withdrawal from Afghanistan, overseeing the largest non-combatant com evacuation operation in history. U.S. Transcom coordinated the rapid movement of over 120,000 U.S. citizens, Afghan guests, and third country nationals, utilizing both military and commercial airlift. U.S. Transcom supported U.S. efforts in providing military aid to Ukraine in response to Russia's invasion through extensive logistics operations, reinforcing the U.S. commitment to European security and deterrence. U.S. Transcom has been essential in the U.S. support to Israel following the attack by Hamas in October of 2023, delivering much-needed supplies to our ally. U.S. Transcom remains focused on maintaining a credible combat force that can deter adversaries protect our national interests, and project and sustain the joint force across the spectrum of conflict. It is with great pleasure that I introduce to you the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Charles Q. Brown, Jr. Well, good morning. It's a uh, real pleasure to be back here at uh, Scott Air Force Base on a very, very important day. You know, Army General uh, John J. Pershing, who was the commander of American forces in World War I, famously said, infantry wins battles, logistics wins wars. U.S. Transportation Command is the backbone of our nation's ability to project power globally. And they make Pershing's words a reality day in and day out. Even as U.S. Transcom mission executes unimpeded, we're going to take a few moments this morning to recognize two exceptional leaders. You know, I had the honor of standing on this stage four years ago when I was Chief of Staff of the Air Force as Jackie uh, Van Ovos became the Commander of Air Mobility Command. Within six months, President Biden nominated her, nominated her to take command of Transcom. I'm humbled to be here once again to recognize Jackie's outstanding achievements as the Transcom commander and to welcome another trans tremendous leader, General Randall Reed, who I know will continue the successful path that General Van Elvos has paved. We're also here to honor their families, their unwavering commitment an unparalleled support for their number one service member. Uh, before going any further, I'd like to uh, thank all that are here to celebrate this special day for Transcom. We have an extensive list of distinguished visitors, including uh, my boss, Secretary Austin. To our government elected officials, to our civic leaders, Department of Defense leadership, general and flag officers, and senior enlisted leaders, Welcome, and thank you for being here. The men and women of U.S. Transcom, represented by those in formation at the back of the hangar, thanks for your dedication, thanks for your selfless service, for all you do providing logistic capability for our joint force, all you do to guarantee our national security, and thanks to your families for the tremendous support they provide each of you. I'd like to take a moment to recognize two of those families who have dedicated decades in service to our nation. Shereen and I would like to uh, thank Jackie's family and friends today, most notably her spouse, Alan. Now, Jackie and, uh, and Alan uh, previously knew each other while serving in the Air Force. Things took a turn when, one day when Jackie chartered a sailboat in Charleston, only to find Alan as a captain. He offered to teach her to sail if she taught him to fly. That is one hell of a pickup line. <laughs> but it worked. 
Now, I do wonder, and I didn't get the complete story today at the pre-reception, does Jackie know how to sell, and does Alan know how to fly? Okay, okay, good on both accounts. Regardless of how this story ended, uh, Alan has been by Jackie's side ever since, supporting her and providing great support to our military families. Although Tracy, Kirsten, Rebecca, Megan, and Jack, uh, Jackie's cherished stepchildren are unable to be here today, they're undoubtedly celebrating from afar. We're happy to have Jackie's father, good to see you again, Hans, uh, with us today, and Jackie's mother, Joy, who we kn I know is here with us in spirit. I know you're both all, uh, proud of uh, all that Jackie has achieved. We're also delighted to have Jackie's sisters, Ingrid and Yvonne here, uh, joining us and celebrating this special occasion. I understand the, uh, there's a special shout out for the class of, uh, you saw the class of 1988? It's a small shout out. <laughs> Nonetheless, we're glad you're here today. Sure, and I would also like to uh, welcome the family and friends of Randall Reed, uh, particularly Randall's spouse, Lynn. Now, when the Reed family was stationed at Ramstein with the 521st Emerald Operations Wing, Lynn coined a new motto for the wing, depend on us. Now, if you know Lynn, it's clear that depend on us reflects the way she has lived her life, always dependable and always there for others. Lynn, you have been a steadfast advocate and supporter of Randall and your three sons, Christopher, Gabriel, and Alexander for decades. You know, actually, as I prepare for this, I asked uh, how long Randall and uh, Lynn had been married, but they don't share that number. The only number they will share is that they were married on June 16th. That much I do know. And they celebrate every year as one year being married, like a couple of newlyweds. For however long you've been married, from duty station to duty station, across oceans and continents, Randall and our nation have depended on you. We thank Randall and Lynn for your steadfast commitment. I also want to acknowledge Randall's parents, Marsha and Moses, it was good to meet you this morning, and his sister Shauna, who are also here to share in this very special day. To both families, thank you for the love and support you've given these extraordinary leaders over the years. Thank you so much. Now, I've known Jackie Vanovos and her family for a few years now. As I mentioned, I had the honor of speaking at her ceremony when she took command of Air Mobility Command. I also had the honor of being uh, there when Jackie pinned on her fourth star, becoming only the fifth women in our Air Force's history to do so. The Air Force was lucky because Jackie joined the military as a very experienced pilot. In every role since, she was first commissioned. She's demonstrated great skill, courage, and leadership. The Air Force benefited from her roles as a test pilot, an acquisitions officer, and as a commander. Flying C-141s during Operations Desert Storm provide comfort and provide hope. You know, Joint Staff benefited tremendously when Jackie was the Vice Director of the Joint Staff. Our nation has benefited tremendously from her leadership at Transcom. I want to commend Jackie's uh, thoughtful and unflappable approach leading Transcom. And I expect Secretary Austin will say more regarding Jackie's tremendous accomplishments in just a few minutes. Jackie, on behalf of the 2.1 men, million men and women in uniform and their families, Shreen and I thank you and Alan for your decades of service to our nation. Wish you and Alan all the best as you open the next chapter. Congratulations, and thanks for your leadership. Now, this morning, just a few hours ago, I had the honor of promoting Randall Reed to be the newest force star general in our joint force. He's well prepared to accept the roles and responsibilities of this new rank. It's not that that's not because he's just another C-141 pilot. It seems to be a trend now. What stands out about Randall is both the depth 
and breadth of his, of his experience. You know, my first opportunity to really engage with Randall was during a mentoring session. We were at uh, Ramstein together and he was moving to the Pentagon to lead the executive action group for the Secretary of the Air Force and the Chief of Staff of the Air Force. It was a job I once held. So I knew a couple of things that I shared with Randall. I'm not sure if he used them or not, but it doesn't really matter. The fact is, Randall has elevated each position he's served in to new heights. He's demonstrated excellence across the globe, from leading operations in Southwest Asia, to commanding airlift and refueling squadrons in strategic roles in the Pentagon, to fostering international partnerships as a defense attache and senior defense official in Turkey. Most recently, as a deputy commander of Rail Mobility Command, Randall has been a relentless advocate for the Air Mobility Command mission, ensuring strategic and operational readiness. Randall, Lynn, Shreen, and I wish you both the best as you take on this new leadership responsibility. We have complete confidence in your leadership and trust U.S. Transcom will continue to excel. Thank you, Jackie. Thank you, Randall, for your service and your dedication to our nation. And earlier this week, I had the uh, opportunity to correspond with General Dave Alvin, the Air Force Chief of Staff. As many of you know, um, all the Air Force senior leadership is at the Air Force Academy participating in Corona, addressing the future of our United States Air Force. The Chief wanted me to pass on how proud he is of both of you, how proud the Air Force leadership is, both of, is proud of you as well. And they all wish you the very, very best. Jackie and Randall, God bless you and your families. God bless our joint force and their families. And God bless the United States of America. Thank you. Thank you, General Brown. It is with great pleasure that I introduce to you the presiding official for today's event, the Honorable Lloyd J. Austin III, Secretary of Defense. Well, good morning, everyone. I don't think there's anybody out there. Good morning, everyone. Right, all right, I'm liking it. It is indeed an honor to be here today with so many friends and distinguished guests, including former members of Congress, former Transcom commanders, local leaders, and more. And I want to give a special shout out to our outstanding Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. General Brown, CQ, thanks for your leadership. Let's also give a warm welcome to the families of General Jackie Manovos and General Randall Reed. <laughs> Above all, today is about the dedicated men and women of U.S. Transportation Command. So let's give them a hand. And I agree with the chairman. It is great to be back at Scott Air Force Base, the epicenter of our military's global reach. Logistics lives here. You know, units here supply U.S. troops around the world. And 37 years ago, this week, the Department of Defense stood up Transcom right here at Scott. Back in 1987, at the establishment cer ceremony, Deputy Secretary of Defense William Taft said that deterrence in modern warfare demand the ability to move, to shoot, and to communicate. And he reminded everyone the order of these three requirements is not accidental. 
The ability to move, to deploy forces and equipment, is first on the list. You know, he was right then, and he's right now. When crises strike, when the Commander-in-Chief asks for options, the ability to move comes first. And the Department of Defense stands ready because of Transcom. And because of your three service components, Air Mobility Command, Surface Deployment and Distribution Command, and the Military Sealift Command, along with the Joint Enabling Capabilities Command. And because of your 120,000 logistics professionals here and around the world. Because of your partners in the commercial transportation industry. And most of all, because of you. All of you. When America calls, Transcom moves out. You know, we've asked a lot of you over the past three and a half years. And you have delivered. And you've made history. In the lead up to and after Putin's all out invasion of Ukraine in 2022, Transcom was there. And over the past two and a half years, Transcom has delivered more than $21 billion in weapons and ammunition to help Ukraine defend itself. We surged forces to Europe to reinforce our NATO allies. We've kept Ukraine's defenders in the fight against the largest military in Europe. And Transcom made it possible. You know, that's also true in the Middle East. After the despicable terrorist assault on Israel by Hamas, almost exactly a year ago, on October 7th, Transcom was there. You helped CENTCOM move forces into place to manage this crisis. And you've delivered crucial security assistance to help Israel defend itself. And you've rushed critical humanitarian aid to Palestinian civilians in Gaza. You know, warfare and the ability to deter conflict hinge on maneuver. And maneuver depends on transcom. You can see the power of maneuver across the Indo-Pacific which is, of course, our priority theater. In last summer, during Exercise Mobility, Mobility Guardian 23, Transcom worked with allies and partners from across the region at an unprecedented scale, involving some 70 cargo and refueling aircraft from seven different countries. And this spring, Cargo aircraft moved an Army Typhon missile battery from Washington State to the Philippines, some 8,000 miles away in only 15 hours. And so, day in and day out, Transcom sustains our forces worldwide. This department cannot keep America safe without you. Transcom is the secret to our ability to project, to maneuver, and to sustain our forces anywhere in the world. So thanks for everything that you have done and delivered. Transcom, you are the best. Now, 
this kind of success doesn't just happen. It is the direct result of the skill and dedication of the men and women of this command and your outstanding commander, General Jackie Van Olst. You know, Jackie, we go way back to your days of flying C-141s in my days of jumping out of C-141s. One of these days, we've got to go back and compare logbooks to see if I ever jumped out, out of one of your airplanes. You see, I'm still looking for the people who put me in the trees. <laughs> now, I stopped jumping out of airplanes a while ago, but Jackie, you kept right on flying them. You've always been at home in the sky, but getting there wasn't easy. As you have said, you've always tried to make the path wider, with more opportunity and with fewer barriers. And you've always had a message for women in uniform. And that message is, don't let anyone tell you that you can't do it. And Jackie, every time that you encountered an obstacle, you kept at it. You've been open about how the Air Force Academy didn't admit you when you first applied. But you kept at it. You enrolled in community college and buffed up your grades. And you installed a pull-up bar in your home and worked on those too. And then you applied again and you more than earned your admission. Though maybe, just maybe, you should have considered West Point. <laughs> just saying. I mean, we could have taught you to fly helicopters, but no, you wanted to fly fighter jets. And you wanted to fly Mach 2. But back then, women weren't allowed to fly fighters. So once again, you made the path wider. And you became a test pilot. And you flew more than 30 aircraft, including F-15s and F-16s. And over your distinguished career, you've been an outstanding pilot, an outstanding mentor, and an outstanding leader. You have consistently showed the power of listening, the power of inclusion, and the power of teamwork. And you helped to launch the next generation of American military leaders towards the sky. Now, General, you've been fortunate to have a phenomenal team by your side. Your parents ran an aviation business, which sparked your love of flying. And they even gave you your first flying job, which was towing advertising banners over the Florida beaches. And it's great to see your dad, Hans, and your sisters, Ingrid and Yvonne, here today. Great to see you guys again. And as the chairman pointed out, your mother, Joy, is no longer with us. But we can easily imagine how proud she was of you. You've helped raise four, four girls, Tracy, Kirsten, Rebecca, and Megan. And I know that they are cheering you on from afar. And I especially want to thank your husband, Alan. He's been with you through it all, through move after move, through your most demanding deployments, and after retiring from the Air Force himself, he built a second career in the aviation industry. And in his volunteer work, he's helped build support networks for military spouses. So Alan, Thank you for your tremendous service and all of your sacrifices.
You know, General Van Ovost, your teammates describe you in the most glowing of terms. They say that you're one of the best leaders that they've ever served under. And they say that they always want to do their very best work because you always do the same. And you bring out excellence in your warfighting team and you do it the old fashioned way by being the best. And so, Jackie, you set an extraordinary example throughout your extraordinary career. And for every woman and every man in the United States military, you've often said that it's hard to be what you cannot see. Well, America looks at General Jackie Van Ovals and sees a leader. Jackie, thank you for your 36 years of tremendous service. And congratulations on your very well-earned retirement. And so today we pass command of Transcom to General Randall Reed. Randall, as I told you earlier, you are the right person for this job. And I am delighted that your parents are here today as well. Moses and Marcia, thank you for teaching your son the values of patriotism and giving back. And Moses, I know that you're a retired Air Force Master Sergeant, so thanks for your example of service. And General, let me also welcome your wife, Lynn. Lynn, it's great to see you again. And Lynn, thanks for all that you've done to support Randall's service. And for your advocacy, on behalf of service members. And I know that your sons, Christopher and Gabriel and Alexandra, all wish that they could be here with you today. Now, General Reed, you're also an accomplished pilot. And like General Van Ovost, you also got your start flying C-141s. You know, we don't have very many former C-141 pilots left on active duty. In fact, I think most of them are sitting right behind me. <laughs> but General Reed, you've done it all. You commanded an air refueling squadron in Central Asia, an expeditionary operations group in the Middle East, and Third Air Force in Germany. And most recently, you were the Deputy Commander of Air Mobility Command. And so you know how it feels to be a Transcom provider and a Transcom customer. So General, thanks for stepping up once more. And I know that you will absolutely excel. And I know that you will take this great warfighting team and make it even better. And I know that you will keep Transcom moving forward. So let's have a round of applause for Randall and his family. I want to close by just saying thanks once more to the superb professionals of Transcom all around the world. Thanks for serving our country. Thanks for defending our values. And thanks for ensuring that the United States has the most combat-ready fighting force in the entire world. You move the U.S. military. And you move heaven and earth. 
and I am deeply proud to be your teammate. May God bless you and your families. May God bless our troops. And may God continue to bless the United States of America. Thank you very much. Thank you, Secretary Austin. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand as Secretary Austin presents the Defense Distinguished Service Medal to General Van Obost. Attention to orders. Citation to accompany the award of the Defense Distinguished Service Medal to General Jacqueline D. Van Obost. General Jacqueline D. Van Obost, United States Air Force, distinguished herself by exceptionally meritorious service and a duty of great responsibility as Commander, United States Transportation Command from October 2021 to October 2024. During this period, General Van Obost's outstanding leadership resulted in major contributions to the national security of the United States. As the unifying leader for America's global distribution network, she was instrumental in providing senior military and political leaders with the strategic flexibility to deliver and sustain the joint force around the globe. She led a total force team of more than 120,000 active duty, National Guard, Reserve and civilians through worldwide operations. Under her leadership, United States Transportation Command executed missions in support of all 11 combatant commands, and she made critical transportation decisions for multiple global contingency operations. She orchestrated the largest joint force deployment in nearly two decades supporting European Command, overseeing 62 presidential drawdown authorities valued at over $21 billion to enable Ukraine's defense against Russia while deterring further escalation. Following Hamas attacks on Israel, she rebalanced global mobility posture to support potential evacuation operations while simultaneously positioning force protection assets across Central Command to preserve time and options. Through new legislation, strategic defense policy, and military transformation initiatives, she has accelerated United States Transportation Command's decision advantage for years to come. The distinctive accomplishments of General Van Ovels culminated a long and distinguished career in the service of her country and reflect great credit upon herself, the United States Air Force, and the Department of Defense. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. And now, it is with great pleasure that I introduce to you General Jacqueline D. Van Obost. Hi, good morning. What a beautiful day to come together and celebrate the incredible men and women of the United States Transportation Command. Let me start by expressing my sincerest gratitude to the team that put this ceremony together today, led by Colonel Jake Leck, in partnership with the 375th Showcase Wing, commanded by Colonel John Poole. Tech Sergeant Ehrlich, thank you for narrating today, and thanks to our proffers, Tech Sergeant Potts and Staff Sergeant Wilson. And thanks to Chaplain Light for lifting us up today and every day. To the Joint Force members in the formation today, led by Chief of Staff Major General Sue Henderson, representing the stalwart staff, component, and subordinate commands. You look great. Thank you for your service and sacrifice and that of your families. To our very best band in blue, the Band of Mid-America, your talents are inspiring. Thank you. To the teams that work behind the scenes but are so instrumental in making these events happen, talking about public affairs, protocol, and all of our volunteers, thank you. And to the tremendous Transcom Joint Color Guard presenting the colors today, please join me in a round of applause for all of them.
Now let me take a moment to congratulate the incoming 15th Commander of U.S. Transportation Command, my friend, General Randall Reed. I'm so excited uh, to welcome Randall and Lynn uh, to the Transcom Command Team. Your selection by President Biden and our Secretary Austin for the best job in the Joint Force is yet another strong endorsement on a tremendous career. I'm confident that you are the absolute right person to accelerate the change necessary to meet the challenge of great power conflict. Secretary Austin, sir, thank you for officiating and thanks for your kind words today. Your daily example of extraordinary leadership at such a time as this is an inspiration challenging all of us to up our game. I'm forever grateful for the trust and confidence you placed in me to lead this phenomenal team. General Brown, Chairman, sir, thank you for your leadership, friendship, and dedication to the Joint Force. I appreciate your collaborative leadership style and clear drive to ensure that we remain the most lethal fighting force in the world. Shireen, thank you for your support of our joint families. You've already made such a huge difference. To the many elected officials, senior statesmen, community leaders, industry leaders, general and flag officers, senior executive service personnel, senior enlisted leaders, family, friends, and teammates, thank you for your leadership and support of the Transcom team. And what a team it is. Envied around the world for our ability to always deliver. Transcom has six unified command plan missions, but only one true purpose, to deploy the military forces of the United States around the globe, assure our allies and partners, deter adversaries, and when called, respond with combat credible forces to win. We are joined in this purpose by our steadfast partners in the entirety of the joint deployment and distribution enterprise. Partners like the Department of Transportation, who ensure our nation's highways railways and seaports are ready to support national defense. I want to thank you to Administrator Ann Phillips here today and the entire Maritime Administration for your tireless work to rebuild readiness in the Ready Reserve Fleet and our merchant mariners. Our fourth component, commercial industry, who are vital to linking operations to the defense industrial base, to global trade networks and transportation capacity. The close partnership we have with the National Defense Transportation Association under Andy Brown's leadership is foundational to us meeting our national security objectives. Allies and like-minded partners around the globe that provide critical access, basing, and overflight, along with logistics agreements that directly expand our global mobility posture, capacity, and integration. And the amazing men and women of this great enterprise from all of our components and their commanders over my tenure. They are for Military Surface Deployment Distribution Command, led by Generals Lawrence and Curtis, Military Sea Lift Command, led by Admirals Wetlaufer and Sobeck, Air Mobility Command, led by Generals Minahan and LaMontagne, Joint Enabling Capabilities Command, led by Generals Jost and McWilliams, and the Defense Logistics Agency, not an assigned component, but integral to all of our operations and critical to establishing our newest mission of global bulk fuel, led by Vice Admiral Skubik and now Lieutenant General Simmerly. Transcom amazing headquarters team with absolute powerhouse deputy commanders, Admiral Mewborn and General Sullivan and Helwig, superb chiefs of staff, Generals Barker and Henderson, senior enlisted leaders, Fleet Myrick and Chief Krizelnik, hard charging directors, deputy directors and division chiefs that accelerate change and deliver on the promise daily. And the impressive third deck team that keeps the command team's engine running so smoothly. All of which is empowered by the most important part of this enterprise, the family members who support and sacrifice daily to ensure that we can continue to answer the call. To Alan and the girls, thank you for your love and support to me, this incredible career, and the men and women of Transcom. Running through the tape together with a stronger family is my most important accomplishment. I'm truly grateful for the Lord's protection and wisdom along our journey. A journey that began with the love and support of my parents and my sisters who instilled the values and determination in me to make a difference in this world. Dad, Yvonne, Ingrid, thank you. 
and I love you. And then continued through my classmates, mentors, senior enlisted leaders, commanders, and community leaders who invested their precious time in me. Thank you for helping me blaze my own trail, which led me to today. As was mentioned, just a few days ago, we celebrated the 37th birthday of Transcom, a command that was born out of necessity, that was built to deploy U.S. forces. Over time, our mandate has expanded to project, maneuver, and sustain the joint force at a time and place of our nation's choosing. If we were a necessity before, we are indispensable now. Wherever you see American forces, Transcom not only put them there, but provides that continuous sustainment so that we can maintain continuous operations. Over the past three years, I challenged you to improve readiness, build and empower teammates, defend and improve our cyber uh, domain, and drive towards decision advantage. You delivered that and so much more, consistently proving your agility and ingenuity while responding to crises in Ukraine, Africa, and Israel, and so many more, all while focusing on our pacing challenge, the PRC, and meeting the constant drumbeat of needs from the global combatant commanders. You delivered on readiness, buying down risk today while providing the trusted assessments necessary to advocate for accelerated recapitalization and modernization of critical fleets, addressing manpower shortages, and reorganizing teams to address the strategic environment. You delivered on empowering a pet competitive and resilient warfighting team, rapidly forming a team and getting to IOC on our new global bulk fuel mission, building a culture of trust and respect where each team member feels valued, beginning shipments under the global household goods contract, and fostering a learning environment where everyone is invited to grow. You delivered on cyber domain mission assurance, building critical partnerships with NSA, Cybercom, Joint Force Headquarters, Doden, and our commercial partners to mitigate vulnerabilities. You delivered on decision advantage, driving towards a single authoritative data set and tools that will better enable decisions made faster integrated across the joint force to outpace our adversaries and provide vital options to our nation's leaders. Ultimately, you delivered hope, deterrence, and freedom around the world. And I am honored to serve with you. And while Alan and I pull chalks and prepare to fly off into our own wild blue yonder, I take solace in the fact that the Transcom team is in good hands with General Reed. Randall and Lim, Alan and I wish you all the best as you head into this consequential command. These talented leaders will not let you down. To the men and women of Transcom, thank you for your service, your sacrifice, and your dedication to always deliver. Promise made, promise kept. Together we deliver. Thank you, General Van Ovost. Technical Sergeant Richard Potts will present Mr. Frosch with a memento on behalf of the United States Transportation Command for his unwavering support to the command, the local community, and Scott Air Force Base. This gift symbolizes our sincere appreciation for his devotion and tireless efforts to the men and women of the command and their families. Thank you so much, Mr. Frosch. The men and women of United States Transportation Command will now honor General Van Ovost with a final salute. We will now perform the official change of command ceremony. 
Our change of command ceremony is a military tradition deeply rooted in history and dates back to the time of Frederick the Great of Prussia. In that period, military organizations developed flags unique to their organizations with specialized colors and designs. When the soldiers followed their leader into battle, their flag was used to provide a very visible point around which members of the unit could rally during the battle. To this flag, both commander and soldiers of a unit would dedicate their loyalty, trust, and allegiance. The formal change of command ceremony afforded these troops the opportunity to witness a new leader assuming their dutiful position. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the change of command ceremony in which General Jacqueline Van Obost will relinquish command to General Randall Reed. Our flag bearer for today's ceremony is United States Transportation Command Senior Enlisted Leader, Chief Master Sergeant Brian Kruzelnik. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. It is, it is with great pleasure that I introduce to you General Randall Reed, Commander, United States Transportation Command. Good morning all. Secretary Austin, Chairman and Mrs. Brown, distinguished guests, and United States Transportation Command. Three words, honored, humbled, ready to serve. Honored and thankful to the President of the United States and Secretary Austin for their special trust and confidence to help provide strategic options for the nation. Humbled to serve with Chairman Brown and help him balance risk by maneuvering the joint force around the globe every minute of every day. Ready to serve without hesitation. I am also ready to serve thanks to a mobility warrior like no other, General Jacqueline Jackie Van Ovos. Your authentic, transparent, and empathetic leadership style inspired all of us within Transcom to do our very best. You leave a wonderful example for all of us to follow, and follow it we will. Lynn and I are deeply grateful for you and Alan. The same qualities that make you great leaders are also the same qualities that make you endearing neighbors. We'll miss you dearly. Ladies and gentlemen, if you had a chance to see the formation arrayed behind you, you will see the representatives of a mighty force 120,000 strong. Those who are not here are a combined military, civilian, and commercial force whose patriotism gives our nation an unrivaled strategic advantage and whose hard work on any given day sets in motion rail cars, trucks, maritime ships, personal vehicle and household goods shipments in the thousands as well as an airplane taking off or landing every 2.8 minutes. America, be assured, nothing will distract us from delivering, be it humanitarian aid or combat power. Make no mistake, the work we must do now to deter growing threats is serious and demands a sense of urgency. Nevertheless, we will never shy away from the contested environment in any domain. Instead, we will do our part to strengthen the joint force to fight and to get to the fight and remain in the fight to carry the day. Mr. Secretary, no matter the crisis, 
no matter the hour, you can continue to depend on the men and women of U.S. Transportation Command for one simple reason. Together, we deliver. Thank you. Thank you, General Reed. Technical Sergeant Richard Potts will present Mrs. Reed with a bouquet of roses, welcoming her as the First Lady of the Command. The roses are yellow and budded, symbolizing warmth and new beginnings. As will the Command's affection, these roses will bloom over time. Thank you, Mrs. Reed. General Reed, to welcome you to the command, the men and women of United States Transportation Command would like to present you with your first salute. Thank you, General Reed. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the playing of our service songs. The correct protocol for military members in the audience is to stand at attention for each service song. Thank you. 
Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the departure of our official party. Defense departing. Joint Chiefs departing. Transportation Command, departing. General, United States Air Force. Departing. Zap boys, inward face. Forward march. Lift, 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 and yeah, lift. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our ceremony. The members of United States Transportation Command welcome aboard General and Mrs. Reed as they join America's world-class transportation team. Please join us at the Scott Event Center to welcome them aboard. Transportation is standing by just outside the hangar door to your left. Thank you and have a great day.